Rush of its repair in our last video. This Game Boy Advance's P is ready for some extra love. We are upgrading to a sleek new shell, adding a USB-C port and enhancing the audio for an outstanding gaming experience. Let's dive into this transformation. By the way, all these mods were purchased from SilentModding.com. This isn't a sponsored mention, though I wouldn't mind if they approach me in the future. Fast shipping, top quality mods, no complaints at all. Alright folks, time to dive in and explore today's lineup of mods. On the docket today, the Deham mod, engineered for an audibly crisper and clearer sound. Following that, we are boosting the Game Boy Advance SP with a USB-C charging mod. Moreover, we are enhancing it with a superior shell, perfectly substituting the former worn-out casing. Clearly this case comes fully equipped with every part imaginable, except for the hinges, which we will need to salvage from the old one later on. Preparations Let's begin a timer to gauge the time required to complete these tasks. Splitting open the case halves, we get to experience the impressive shoulder buttons, which have a satisfying touch. Oh god, this is enormously satisfying. Now it's the moment to fit the LCD screen into the new section of the shell. I referred to the hinges from the old case earlier. Now it is time to remove them from the old shell for reuse. Apparently this tool isn't quite suited for the job. A bit of a letdown. Time to grab a small hammer and a screwdriver. It's hammer time. A couple of more or less spot on hammer taps and voila, the hinge is making its grand exit. Repeat the magic with the other hinge and fingers crossed we bid farewell to the old shabby case. Great, we have successfully acquired two hinges to play with. Awesome! It's time to ditch those green plastic caps on the hinges and switch them out for the atomic purple ones from our new shell. Let's loosely assemble the halves, setting the stage for the hinge inversion. The caps come off with ease. Simply slide them off the hinge and then slide the new ones right into their spot. Nice. The hinges slide into these notches, aligning with the guide rails you can see within the openings. It's important not to push them in all the way just yet. Now let's do the same on the other side. Open the lid slightly to position the hinges. A gentle press afterward ensures they are seated snugly into place. Fantastic! Our shell now has fully functioning hinges! Joining the screen and shell now. Careful with that rim cable, it's a fragile ring bearer. Now, let's escort the ribbon cable through a tiny slot to the back, like threading a needle. Patience and gentleness are key. Time to spill the beans, or rather the contents of the little bag that came with the shell. Since the bag's heat sealed, we will have to channel our inner pirate and tear into it to join the party. A quick sort will give us a better lay of the land. Hmm. I hope leaks all the right screws. Now, with our newly collected screws, we will secure the screen firmly in its place. First, we will get the shell ready by repositioning the buttons and the speakers, setting the stage for the USB-C mod. Alright team, it's time to roll up our sleeves and dive in. The USB-C mod. Time to liberate the USB-C mod from its cozy packaging. First up, we have to say goodbye to the old, not so pretty Nintendo connector. To do this safely, we will use a PCB holder, a perfect spot to secure the motherboard. Time to bring in our trusty microscope camera for this job. Here's the patient that ready to be taken out. We will minimize the required heat by using low melt solder, which blends with the existing solder to lower its melting point. 
what you are seeing as Flux, your soldering sidekick. Hero or sidekick. It aids in solder flow, making your job much more manageable. We will coat the joint thoroughly with low melt solder to ensure a flawless blend. Let's not forget to pay attention to the anchor points at both the top and bottom. Random metal shields collected over time come in handy to guard against the heat from the desoldering process. This is when we fire up the hot air soldering gun, ready to remove the relic of a connector from a previous era. It won't be long before we can extract the connector using tweezers. Ceramic ones I might go to if they don't transfer heat. And there we have it, the old connector is off. Theoretically it's good for another round, all thanks to the magic of low melt solder, a real lifesaver in situations like this. Now let's gently lift off the metal shields, having served well in shielding the PCB throughout the desoldering phase. It is time to give the area a thorough cleanup, yielding IPA and a cotton swab. Next step we freshen up with some new flux and then sweep away the old solder from the joints with a bit of solder wick finesse. Quick swipe with IPA for a final touch up and we are all set to carefully align the USB-C connector mod on the board. Aligning the anchor points and pins is crucial here. We want that connector dead straight on the main board or we'll be wrestling with the shell later. Well, the spatchers definitely had a rough go after my earlier poking attempt. Time to bring out the sharpener and restore this little guy to its former glory. Much better now. Like I said, getting the alignment spot on is key to saving ourselves a whole heap of trouble later on. Slap on some fresh flux and let's get down to business soldering this connector in place. It's quite a fiddly process, no doubt, but with a bit of patience and precision we can get it done. It's not witchcraft after all. I believe in witchcraft. Interestingly enough, under the microscope it's not always easy to tell if your joints are up to snuff. It adds a bit of mystery to the process. We are going to tilt the board a bit. A change in angle can give us that clearer insight we need. There we go. It's like switching from a blurry movie to HD. Now onto our mini solar bridge demolition project and a bit of joint beautification. Let's turn the board and have a look. Alignment is on point. Now let's play cleanup crew and tackle this residual mess. The bottom side's looking good. Seems like it has been taking some beauty tips from the top. Time to see if our connector transplant paid off. Let's plug in and hope for the best. Will our modded beauty take a zip of that fresh power? It's alive! This is a small victory, but hey, in the world of tech mods, every win counts. Nice. With the USB-A to USB-C, it's smooth sailing, regardless of how we flip the cable. The big question remains, can it handle a USB-C to USB-C connection? Not every USB-C connector is cut out for this task. It requires specific resistor placement to make the magic happen. Gotcha! Time to flip the cable and give it another try. Nice, it works, so we only need to remember to get the correct orientation and it works flawlessly. Next up, the DHAM mod. Let's get the board into the shell and fire up our little handheld hero to hear what it sounds like in its original state. To be honest, it doesn't sound bad. Here we see the DHAM mod. Basically, it is a filter with multiple capacitors that smooths out any noise from our beloved retro sound. The beauty of this mod is that we don't need any wires, we place it on the board and solder it directly. Let's look under our trusty microscope camera to see exactly what is happening. 
The soldering process is simple enough. Our task is just to bridge the round pads with the GBA SP board's capacitors. The capacitors are these small parts right here. I will magnify them so you can see them more clearly. We will now repeat this process for all four connections, ensuring each one gets the same careful treatment. Our last connection here is being a bit tricky, calling for some extra love and patience compared to the others. Alright, that went well. Time to move on to the last pair of connections on the lower left side. It's a similar story for these two. Add flux, sole of the joints, but here we are connecting to the motherboard pads instead of capacitors. Nearly there. Looking good, time for our standard cleanup routine to keep things neat and tidy. Okay everyone, we have got the DHAM mod in place, time to fire it up and compare its performance with our previous sound test. In my opinion, the sound now seems much richer, the highs and lows are more pronounced, it just sounds more well-rounded. Time to put our little retro buddy back together. Careful handling is key when slotting the LCD ribbon cable into its connector, they are notoriously fragile. Let's grab a tweezer to secure the cable in place, continuously applying gentle pressure to keep it from coming loose again. It is time to fit the rubber pads in place for the screen. A sputter is my tool of choice for this task. The square shaped nut needs to be pressed into the slot, which is quite tight. We will use a tweezer to apply the necessary pressure. Next up, the crowning touch, the glorious Nintendo logo. Looking good, isn't it? Due to the USB-C connector's smaller size compared to the old Nintendo one, we will now fit the transparent piece from the mud kit. To do this, we need to slightly lift the motherboard, otherwise it just won't fit. Let's lock the motherboard down firmly into place with screws. Next, let's attach the back panel of the case and secure it with screws too. And with that, the reassembly is complete. We will give the screen a gentle clean, tidy up our workspace and then admire our handy work. In just 90 minutes we have tackled a shell change and two mods, not bad. A blow into the cartridge for good luck and then we will slot it right in with a snap. turns on perfectly. There's a noticeable boost in sound quality, but it's hard to do justice to it with just my camera's microphone. Oh, before I give you a sneak peek of the mod we will cover in an upcoming video, let's not forget to add the fresh label to our new shell. Perfect. And let's not forget to peel off these protective foils, they really take away from the look. What a beauty! Clearly the device is now powered by USB-C, which is incredibly handy. Now for the preview I hinted at, the upcoming mod delves into audio, will this tiny board playing a key role? Make sure you're there to see it! Happy tinkering and until next time, bye!